All right, everyone. Welcome back to another video. Uh, last time we left off with um, the retreat to Singapore, Malaya evacuated. And we just got to see this wonderful map. We're now on to the U.S. Navy raids the Marshall and Gilbert Islands. February 1st, 1942. U.S. Navy hits back. <clears throat> on February 1st, a brilliant surprise attack was carried out on Japanese naval and air bases in the Marshall and Gilbert Islands by a U.S. force of aircraft carriers supported by cruiser and destroyers. Uh, heavy damage was <clears throat> caused to enemy ships and harbor installations, and many planes were destroyed on the ground. Uh, the Japanese losses uh, amounted to one light cruiser, a destroyer, two submarines, a 17,000... A 17,000-ton liner, three 10,000-ton tankers, five 5,000-ton cargo ships, and two fleet auxiliaries and two minesweepers, accounting in all for some 100,000 tons in addition to at least eight more ships uh, amounted <clears throat> to 50,000, to about 50,000 tons, were severely damaged. Uh, 38 enemy aircraft were destroyed in combat for a, a loss of 11 U.S. planes. The air bases at Tauro, uh, Wote, Roy, and Enbria, Enbor, Enb Enibor, Enibor, that sounds about right, um, were wiped out. No U.S. vessel was lost. The picture taken during these operations show top, this top picture there, a U.S. naval plane over uh, Woti Atoll. Woti Atoll. We're going to go with that. And yeah, you can see. There's the U.S. plane. You can see all the smoke in the background from all the uh, burning installations and all the damage that either this plane or many other planes um, happened to cause on this island. Or this tiny atoll, I guess. Now, um, the columns of smoke come from ammunition and fuel dumps that have been set on fire. So there we go. Now we know it's the ammunition and fuel dumps that have been lit. And that's why there's this huge columns of smoke rising into the air. Left, an American cruiser and aircraft carrier during the action. So there's the cruiser right here, I believe. It's the cruiser, and the, that looks like the aircraft carrier. The aircraft carrier looks really tiny, though. I mean, it's obviously because force perspective, like, that's really far away. This is close, but still, that just looks like a tiny aircraft carrier. And then to the right here, the flight deck uh, to one of the aircraft carriers with its aircraft lined up on the deck, ready to take off. So there we see all these planes ready to take off although they look kind of bunched up you know you wouldn't think that they'd be able to just take off here but if they say they can take off they can take off you know they're not lying hopefully not at least japanese open attack on singapore uh, february 8th through 12th 1942 landings on singapore island uh, after the british retired across the causeway from Johore Bahur to Singapore. How do you, how do people pronounce it? Singapore, Singapore. I've never heard like a definitive way. And so I'm going to say it probably one way or another. And if I get it wrong, I do apologize, by the way. I just, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Singapore Island on January 31st. There was a brief lull in the siege during which time the Japanese forces on the mainland reorganized for the final assault on the island fortress, which opened on the night of February 8th, and by the 12th, the invaders were near the racetrack, two miles northwest of the city, and the reservoir, only source, the only source of Singapore's water supply, was seriously threatened. The picture show top uh, Japanese light tanks on the Johor end of the causeway. So there we go. We see all those Japanese tanks. Or I mean, there's just really one with a bunch of infantrymen. But, yep. Obviously, the Japanese do have tanks. We don't really talk about them as much compared to, like, you know, the Western theater. 
just because like a lot of the time the land wasn't really it just wasn't as useful to have necessarily tanks all the time but they did have tanks uh it's just they don't talk about them very much there's not the huge tank battles that there are in uh the western theater and then below here japanese trucks crossing an improvised bridge to the Singapore island built to replace the damaged causeway can see that it's a uh, definitely makeshift you can kind of tell because of the little bit of dan a uh, little bit of uh like thrown togetherness of it kind of it looks very um diy as they would say the key to the pacific falls to the japanese february 15th 1942 singapore surrenders the capital of the Straits Settlement fell to the invaders on February 15th after a siege of 15 days. Thus ended the campaign in Malaya, which had lasted for 70 days, and had been fought against a numerically superior enemy who, from the outset, had almost undisputed control of the air. The picture showed top... A... Uh... Oh, wait. A damaged British ship in the docks at Singapore during a bombing attack. So there we see. That's just a big um, uh, tanker uh, for supplies and things like that. That would have been a big target, obviously. I mean, one, it's a huge ship. And two, you know, look at, you know, if it has all the supplies on it and stuff like that or men and stuff, they would want to take that out. bottom here oh, wait nope bottom here it's going in a weird order uh burning buildings and warehouses on the waterfront so there we see some of the burning buildings right there you can kind of tell and obviously the piles of rubble that are like right here yep destroy the warehouses cripple their supplies And then here in the middle, um, Japanese infantry and tanks in actions on the outskirts of the city. Yep. Moving up. Gonna, then obviously, yeah, Singapore Falls. Um, they, the British and Singapore and the Malayan troops do their best to defend, but it just doesn't work out. Um, the Japanese overwhelm them. The air pilots of the Japanese out outperform, and I mean there were more of them too. So you know you can fight for so long, but once your enemy has just so many more numbers than you, you can't fight forever. Japanese continue their advance in Burma, February fifteenth to twelfth. 1942. Fall of Pegu. Oh, Pegu? On January 30th, the Japanese forces in Burma occupied Molamine, and the British retired to the west bank of the Salween River. On February 10th, however, the enemy crossed the river northwest of uh, Mar Martaban, and after fierce fighting, occupied the town. Farther north, other attempts to cross the river in the Penan area were repulsed, but on the 15th, the British were withdrawn to the lines of the Bilin River after evacuating uh, Thatton. Here, strong counterattacks in which the RAF, the Indian Air Force, and the American Volunteer Group gave valuable support, slowed down the Japanese advance, but on the 22nd, a fresh attack was mounted by the enemy who forced a crossing of the Berlin and made heavy assaults on the bridgehead on the east bank of the Sitang River. The next obstacle in their way, the town of Pegu, 40 miles north of Rangoon, fell. And on the railway from Rangoon to Mandalay and the road to China were thereby cut. The pictures show... Above left, so here, General Yamashita 
Japanese commander in Malaya and Burma on a tour of the occupied territory. There we see. He's checking all the spoils that his uh, wonderful troops have captured for him, I'm sure. That's how he thinks of it. On the right, Japanese troops uh, passing through a Burmese village. You can see them there. See all the Burmese people. Yeah, um, and all the occupied lands in Japan, obviously, as many of us know, suffered horribly. Like, it's really bad. Don't get me wrong. I like Japan. They're a good ally, things like that, to us now. But back then, they committed some heinous crimes that they still kind of deny, which is just appalling and awful, really. Below left... Uh, a Japanese tank uh, column crossing a river over on an emergency bridge. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's an emergency bridge, seeing as how it uh, looks... It looks like rubble. <laughs> it does not look like it was put together very well, but hey, if it's holding them up, that's all that matters to them. They're like, well, we'll get across, even if it is on uh, loose planks and things of that nature. And then on the right... The RAF taking off from a Burmese airfield. And yeah, the Japanese had better planes. Um, you could say, arguably, more skilled pilots. Um, and yeah, the, the air forces here, of the RAF, the Indian, and the American volunteer, they do their best, but... And they, they may be more skilled, potentially... But with better planes, it's really hard. And the Zero, <clears throat> the I think it's the Mitsubishi, right? I could be wrong about that, but it's one of those brands. Um, but the Zero is just a really good plane. So it's really hard to beat that. All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I can improve on. I uh, really appreciate your feedback. Um... And as always, subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Um, we're almost at a thousand. I can't believe it. Um, it's, it's really great. So thank all you. Uh, thank you to all of you who have subscribed. It means a lot.